Hey everybody, welcome back. We are now turning to a huge subsection of microeconomics called theory of the firm, okay? Theory of the firm. When you hear theory of the firm, we're basically focused on how firms make decisions. Now, underneath theory of the firm is this unit called cost of production, and we're gonna have several videos doing the cost of production. Basically, understanding what a firm considers as cost, okay, and then what are the types of cost out there. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you the answer straight up front, but not all the information then because it's gonna take some videos. First of all, what do they consider cost? It's this thing called opportunity cost, and that's what this video is about. We'll be going that through that in just a second. Next, um, what are the types of cost to a firm? Well, there's fixed cost and there's variable cost, and we're definitely gonna be having videos on those too, okay? So once again, theory of the firm, underneath theory of the firm, major unit, cost of production, okay? And that's what we're focused on right now. We're focused on what do economists consider cost, okay? Which are opportunity costs. So this is very much about opportunity cost. So I'm just gonna take you through this whiteboard real quick, okay? Cost to an economist. So, cost to an economist is opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? Well, it equals the explicit plus the implicit cost, okay? So let's talk about the explicit first. Y'all, that's what you already understand, okay? Because everybody understands explicit costs, because what are explicit costs? Those are the costs associated with cash outlays of doing something. When you go do something, the cash outlay, okay, that you have to make when, to go do that thing, that is the explicit cost. Nobody messes up on that one. Everybody understands explicit cost. However, the other type of cost, implicit cost. Not many people consider that, okay? And it's very important. Let, let me put that in a different way. Most people don't consider it when they talk about it. However, subconsciously, a lot of times we actually do consider this, okay? So keep that in mind. So that's a little nuance right there. But what is implicit cost, okay? It is real cost not associated with a cash outlay. So that still didn't clarify it. I'm sure it didn't. Here's what implicit costs are, okay? They are the foregone profits, truly it's what we call accounting profits, we'll I'll define in a second, but it's the foregone profits you would have made from the next best alternative, okay? So if you would have used your resources in the next best alternative way, the profits you would have made from that are a cost. They are a real cost, but you don't have to pay that money. That foregone cost, though, is a real cost. So to an economist, opportunity cost is both explicit plus implicit. Let me put another little caution in there. Some kids get so focused on understanding this concept of implicit cost, they forget that opportunity cost also includes explicit. Do not forget that. The, the economist looks at both explicit and implicit and adds those two together. What everybody considers right here, explicit, and then this thing that's kind of unique to the economics profession. So let me take him down my whiteboard here. Total benefit, this first thing I'm gonna, this little equa equation here, pretty straightforward, okay? Total benefit minus total cost equals economic profit or loss, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Why, why do I put the word economic profit or loss there instead of just profit and loss? Because I know I'm talking about total cost. I'm talking about both of these types of cost, okay? Next, total benefit. When we're doing theory of the firm, y'all, total benefit is total revenue, okay? When we're doing theory of the firm, okay, these are profit maximizing firms. Total benefit is total revenue. Total cost, that's opportunity cost. And never forget that. That's something that makes it really simple, okay? Total cost is opportunity cost. They're one and the same. So I actually think using either one of those terms makes sense, okay? Equals, once again, economic profit or loss. Breaking it down again, so... Total revenue, just abbreviated as TR, nothing big there, minus opportunity cost. So minus the explicit plus the implicit cost, which I already got, right? Equals the profit or loss. So now we've got to fill this thing in, okay? And to do this, I've got this little thing right here we're going to fill in. To do this, I'm going to tell you a story, okay? Or I'm going to give you kind of like some information. We're going to make some, um, some evaluation of it, okay? Here's the situation. Lisa. She's thinking about opening up a lemonade stand, okay? Now, in her town, there's actually a lemonade rental company. I want you to remember that. It's a lemonade rental company. And what you can do for $50, 
you can rent every single thing you need from the lemonade rental company to open up your lemonade stand. And the only thing they ask is when you're done, return all the equipment and anything you didn't use, okay? So what do you get from this lemonade rental, uh, rental company? You get a canopy, you get a table, you get a cooler, you get a pitcher, you get cups, you get the concentrate, you get even a cigar box to put your revenues in, you get a, a little whiteboard, right? Lisa's lemonade stand. You get everything. It's just when you're done, just, you know, the concentrate or whatever else you didn't use, just take it back. The cups, whatever, just take it back and leave it with them, okay? So you get that for a full day, okay? Cost you $50 to get all that stuff. So let's just say that Lisa, if she opens up the lemonade stand, is expecting to make $150 in total revenue, okay? $150 in total revenue. Should she open up the lemonade stand? Well, a lot of times what we'd ask ourselves at this point is, would she be profitable if she opened up the lemonade stand? If you asked an accountant, would she be profitable if she opened up the lemonade stand, their answer would be absolutely. They're done with this. This is easy. Yes, $150 in revenue, $50 in cost, $150 minus $50, that's $100 profit, okay? But the accountant is not focused on what's the best alternative. That's right. The accountant is not focused on what's the best alternative, okay? They're doing something very important also, but that's not what they're doing. They're not making a decision about should she or should she not. They're looking about can she do something? And can she open up the lemonade stand? Absolutely, okay? She's going to make positive accounting profit. But then if you ask the, the economist the same question, should she, will she be profitable? The economist is gonna say, I have no idea. Okay, that's a strange answer. They're just gonna go, I got no idea. You're gonna be like, what do you mean? $150 in revenue. She's gonna pay $50. There's no, she's not putting out pamphlets. She's not advertising. There's no other cash outlay she's gonna make. She's gonna make a $50 cash outlay, and in that cigar box is gonna be $150. What do you mean you don't know? And the economist says, look, I'm making a decision here. That's what my whole profession is about. And to make a decision, I have to know about an alternative. You have to tell me about an alternative. What else could she, with those resources, what else could she have done, okay? And the main resource right now is Lisa. What could Lisa have done with her time besides open up the lemonade stand? And let's just say it just so happened that Lisa could have done some babysitting. She could have babysit for the Smith family. They're heading out of town, okay? And they pay $12 an hour, and they're going out of town for the same amount of time she would have opened up the lemonade stand. Let's call it 10 hours, okay? 10 hours. What does that equal? $120. Now, was she profitable knowing she could have babysat instead of open up the lemonade stand? Well, let's take a look at this, okay? I've got this little formula set up right here and we're gonna fill it in, okay? This first row, I want you to remember what we're evaluating is the lemonade stand. That's an LS, we're evaluating the lemonade stand. Right now, the alternative is the babysitting, okay? We'll see if it remains the next best alternative or if it becomes the best thing to do with our time. But right now, we're evaluating the lemonade stand. What's the total revenue of the lemonade stand? We know what that is, $150. What is the explicit cost? Well, that is $50. What is the implicit cost? Well, what is the profits she could have made or the accounting profits she could have made from doing the next best alternative, babysitting. Well, that's $120 in profits she would have made, 120. So was she profitable to an economist? And the answer is heck no. She would have made a loss, okay? That is a negative sign right there. If you ever evaluate something in economics and you get a negative sign, meaning loss, it means do not do it. Your alternative is better, okay? In fact, we already know her alternative is gonna be $20 better, but I'm gonna prove that to you in a second, okay? There is an alternative that is better, don't do it. So to understand this, we're gonna do the same thing again, but this time we're gonna evaluate the babysitting instead of the lemonade stand. So babysitting, there we go, put this right there. What is the total revenue? Once again, 10 hours of babysitting, $12 an hour, pretty simple. That is $120 in total revenue. What's the explicit cost of babysitting? Well, that's zero, guys. And I think we all know that, right? You never show up to go babysit and the person says, hey, pay me 20 bucks so you can babysit my kid. No, that doesn't happen, okay? There's no cash outlay to babysitting. You just show up at the door and then you start babysitting, okay? So no cash outlay, no explicit cost. However, there was absolutely an implicit cost, okay? What is it? It's the accounting profit she could have made, okay? That, that profit or surplus from the accountant's standpoint 
standpoint, and I'm meaning to say accountant right now, that accounting profit she could have made by using her resources in the alternative way. So what could she have done? She could have done the baby, uh, sorry, the lemonade stand. She could have done the lemonade stand, made 150 bucks. However, there was an explicit cost of $50. So the accounting profit from that was $100. And that is a cost. We are going to subtract it, okay? So 120 minus, well, zero plus 100 is 100. So 120 minus 100, what do we get? A positive 20. In economics, you ever get a positive number. I don't care if it's a positive one or a positive one million. You get a positive number in economics, that means that is the best decision. It is better than all other alternatives. Everything has been considered. That's right, guys. Total cost, that's what the economist does. They look at all of the costs, total cost, the opportunity cost, both implicit and explicit costs have been considered. So if you get a positive number, even if it is little bitty, it means go do it. And remember, that's what an economist is really thinking about, right? What's the economist thinking about? Should I do something? Positive number, yes, you should. That is your best decision. Once again, economics, all about decision making. Hopefully you see how all that rolls together, okay? That is how an economist thinks about cost. See you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.